Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to another class. Uh, okay, before we go ahead, let's just uh, begin with a word of prayer. So can anyone just lead us in prayer, please? Any one of us, please lead us in prayer. Go ahead. Anybody? Father, we pray that the time we spend in your presence will be a blessing and we'll be able to learn from your word. Help each one of us to abide in you and to understand what you're trying to teach us, Lord. Help us to follow your footsteps, Lord. We pray for Pastor Paul, even as he is unfolding the word with you. We pray that we will all be able to grasp it in its fullest level, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. Okay. Uh, so before we begin today's class, just, just uh, look at a quick recap of what we did over the last weeks. Uh, we looked at the urgency, the necessity of sharing the gospel. Uh, we looked at, you know, uh, why everyone you know, in this world, everyone needs a savior, whether they're rich, poor, uh, whether they have everything in life, the things of this world, yet everyone needs a savior. So we looked at that at chapter one. Chapter two, we looked at the sufficiency of the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? Uh, all we need to do is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right? And we looked at uh, many chapters, and one important one, uh, 1 Corinthians, where Paul is writing to the Corinthian church, and uh, these are Gentiles who, you know, we looked at the, a little bit of the history of the Corinthian church as well, with this goddess Aphrodite with a uh, thousand male prostitutes, thousand female prostitutes, and this in between this place of sexual immorality and idolatry and all the sinful things that are happening. Paul was able to go in their midst and all he did was he said I shared the gospel the message of the cross that's why he writes the message of the cross is both the power of God unto salvation so what you and I need is just the gospel of Jesus Christ yes God has given us uh, uh, many other options as well uh, where we can you know share our testimonies uh, we can there are a lot of times people get saved just by uh, maybe listening to a song, a gospel song. Uh, sometimes people get saved just by hearing the word of God. Uh, so all of this is true and it's, it, it does work. But uh, we need to have our foundations strong. That, hey, the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ is more than enough to bring salvation to others. Right? Uh, one of the things that uh, I struggled with initially was, uh, you know, you're just giving this message, you know, Jesus was born uh, and he, he lived a holy life. He died on the cross for us. He rose, he took up our sins on the cross. He rose again from the dead. It sounds too simple. Uh, you know, uh, how can it touch a person's life uh, in such a drastic way that, you know, they will be willing to give their lives for this person? Jesus, uh, but we need to be assured, right? That's where you know we looked a little bit about our identity in Christ as well. That if we know who we are and who we belong to, uh, and when we begin to share the message of the uh, of Jesus Christ, the gospel, uh, that's where we will see the power of God, right? Uh, we also looked at how the word sozo in in the in the uh, Hebrew word, the Hebrew word sozo, which which is a power-packed word, being healed, delivered, preserved, rescued, uh, you know, saved from the works of the devil, and all of this is available to each and every believer, right? Then we also looked at uh, the spiritual laws, the four spiritual laws. Now we did talk about it that you know even while we are sharing. To people around us, people uh, in our you know workplace or friends, uh, we don't have to 
you know, remember, okay, I, I need to know the points of the four spiritual laws, but you can be very open and, uh, you know, use these things as guidelines to help you to present the gospel uh, to others. And then we looked at the uh, two minute testimony as well. Um, you know, if somebody is sick, and they say, hey, you know what, I was sick. Uh, many years ago and uh, you know i prayed to jesus and this is what jesus did to me he brought healing upon my body or i was going through emotional sicknesses and uh, emotional pain and uh, uh, you know uh, and i prayed to jesus and this is what he did he rid me of all my fear and he set me free just a two minute testimony and when we share that uh, it's able to impact other people's lives as well uh, and then we looked at the third chapter of power and love. Now, just because, uh, you know, we have uh, the gospel and we have, you know, experienced the love of Christ, uh, it's very important to remember not to mock other religions or not to mock people who are of other faiths. Why? Because Jesus himself set an example for us in the scriptures and we looked at it. Jesus ministered out of compassion, out of love, and in power, right? Uh, so when we look at the ministry of Jesus, uh, yes, he walked in power, right? Where demons and, you know, people who are sick were just healed. But he also walked in compassion, meaning he, he was able to, uh, you know, have compassion on them. He said, even though these people don't believe, I, you know, he was the Messiah, even though these people were just following him because of, uh, you know, healing or whatever. Uh, but he was compassionate. He did not say, look, uh, you are not a Jew, so I will not, uh, you know, pray for you. I will not bring healing on you. He didn't do that. Right. Um, he brought healing to many people out of compassion. And this is very important as we all you know, uh, start off in ministry and, uh, you know, already part of ministry, it's very important to have a foundation of our ministry out of love and out of compassion, right? Now, if we start a ministry or we are in the ministry and we're doing it just because people should know us or uh, we should become famous, now that is the wrong reasons uh, to be in ministry. And we need to go back to God and say, God, help me. Uh, help me to get back to what you want me to do. Help me to minister out of love, out of compassion. The real reason for starting ministry is to have is is not that okay. People may call us pastor or you know evangelist or whatever, uh, or to be on the stage. That's not the real reason. That is part of uh, the calling that we have. But the real reason for ministry. It's because you have compassion and love for the people, right? And we also looked at uh, when we have compassion, we flow out of that compassion and love, the love of Christ, we will see that signs, miracles, and wonders will be a common thing, right? Uh, and, and we also saw that, you know, nowadays in the church, it's gone the other way around. Uh, people are behind signs, wonders, and miracles, but they've forgotten to minister out of compassion and love. And so we as believers, and even as we serve in the church, very, very important. Remember that when we flow out of compassion, out of the love of Christ, automatically we will see miracles happening in people's lives. We will see lives being impacted, lives being touched. We don't have to do anything, right? Because we are ministering out of the love of Christ. And uh, last week, we looked at overcoming inhibitions, right? Uh, all of us also shared, a couple of us shared a few inhibitions. Uh, some of it was not knowing what to say uh, or feeling that nobody's interested in this gospel. Everyone are busy, right? Uh, they have work Monday to Friday, and then Saturday, Sunday, they want to rest. So everyone are busy. We, we don't want to disturb them. Uh, and then the fear of rejection or ridicule. What if people make fun of me? What if people reject me in the workplace, in my college, uh, or being ashamed of the gospel? And, uh, and then we also look at other kinds of excuses of, uh, you know, it's not my personality, it's not my responsibility, or I'm afraid if people ask me difficult questions. Uh, so all these inhibitions will be there, 
right? Now, I'm not saying that uh, these inhibitions will go in just, you know, a day or so. There are certain things that will take time, right? And so we have to look to God. We have to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, give me the strength, give me the ability, uh, you know, to help me overcome this. If it is fear, you know, ask the Holy Spirit. So you declare the verses uh, uh, of the Bible or declare scriptures over yourself. Say, God, you have not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love and sound mind. Uh, and if it's maybe sometimes you may feel ashamed to be to say that we are Christians. So pray, ask God to break off all those chains and then God will slowly, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit will begin to liberate us. And we'll see that we'll be able to share the gospel in power, in authority, without any fear, uh, knowing that Jesus is with us. So uh, even as we go ahead from here, chapter five, uh, what we will do is, you know, towards the end uh, of a few classes, we will leave it open for discussions. We'll take probably time to hear from each other, you know, uh, uh, places where we have tried and we have, you know, and I will share times when I have tried sharing the gospel and have failed. And also times that I, you know, uh, try to work on it and improve and try to, you know, where, where it, I was able to share the gospel. So we will also take some time to share on that as well. Right. Is that okay? Any questions before we go to chapter five? Uh, any thoughts, any questions? Shall we go ahead? Everything's okay? All right. Okay, let's get into chapter five. Uh, so now we look at all these inhibitions and all of that. Now let's look at how do we get started? Right? We looked at it's important to share the gospel. We looked at what the gospel is. We looked at the inhibitions and all of that. But now how do we get started? Uh, what, 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 how, how do I step out of my comfort zone uh, to begin to share the gospel, right? Now, let's look at a few points. Now, again, these are just guidelines that can help us in sharing the gospel, right? First one, ask leading questions, which means what? Ask questions that will lead you to an opportunity to share the gospel, right? Remember this, Jesus, he said great stories, but he also asked great questions. Great questions. Remember the time when, uh, you know, the, they tried to trap Jesus and they said, okay, Jesus, uh, should we pay taxes? So uh, what a wonderful answer, full of wisdom. Jesus said, whose face do you see on the coin? It says, uh, Caesar. So give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar give to God what belongs to God. He tipped it off with a question. Whose face do you see on the coin? So they had to answer their own question. Right? They said Caesar's. So, yeah, so give to Caesar's what belongs to Caesar. Give to God what belongs to God. Now, if I was a person, if I was there, I would have asked what belongs to God. And Jesus would have, I'm sure Jesus would have said, you belong to God. Amen? Very important. Ask leading questions, questions that will open up, uh, you know, an opportunity for you to share the gospel. Now, here's the thing. Learn to ask good questions. Now, if we go about asking questions just to trap another person or to find out how much they know about, uh, the, you know, about their religion or, uh, you know, uh, to, to, uh, to ridicule them. Now, these are wrong intentions to ask questions. That's what the, you know, the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the other, uh, the high priests, that's what they wanted to do. Right? Uh, remember, uh, uh, Pilate, uh, he, he says, uh, uh, are you the son of God? What did Jesus say? He could have just said yes. Uh, but he says, why are you asking me this? Is it because you want to know? Or is it because you want or others have uh, uh, have been telling you this? Right. So he knew that Pilate is just trying to like trap him. And so very important. Ask good questions. Now, when we ask these good questions, uh, we will open up the person to their own assumptions. Right. When we ask good questions. So 
so for example somebody asks you uh, hey how do, how do you know that uh, jesus is the only way uh, so you we need to ask a good question right because uh, we have to answer that but you can always ask a question back right now when we see in uh, jesus's ministry he asked many questions many 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 questions very rarely jesus answered a question with an answer he always most of the time 9 out of 10 times he answered a question with a question right uh, remember when the uh, even to his disciples when he they were in the boat aren't you afraid we are going to die and what did jesus say no why are you did jesus say why are you afraid you know no I, the number of miracles i've done you know i'm able to stop the storms and jesus asked them where is your faith right uh, so good questions will open up the person's perspective as to why he's asking that question right now even as we begin to you know uh, evangelize maybe some of us have already been doing that for many years uh, but these are pointers that we can use right uh, we must understand that when we begin to ask the right questions we open up that person's reasons for asking that question right and this is a very powerful way that we can impact people's lives i remember this young man uh, and uh, this was a couple of years back maybe about 3 4 years back and he he was an atheist and so he he would ask me why do you believe it's a good friend of mine uh, why why do you believe in this jesus and uh, uh, so i said why should i not you know so i would always ask him questions why should i not you know uh, he's done so much for me he's changed my life and i'm happy of who i am and uh, and so it was only questions so i began to understand that the only reason he was asking me this was because he wanted that relationship you know that we have with jesus but he's not able to find it and so he came up to the conclusion that there is no god so eventually i had to tell him it was not a it's not a emotional feeling or it's not a physical feeling of accepting the lord jesus it is about faith in jesus christ and faith is not always a feeling it is a knowing within right so uh, so asking important questions will get you to make that person open up to her own assumptions now another important way of asking questions is to find out if they have any knowledge about you know jesus about the church do they have any church background what do they think about jesus right so for example uh, you're talking to a, a person from another faith maybe islam or or a hindu uh, you know a good way is to ask them you know one of the things i realized is now if you're ministering to a muslim 9 out of 10 i would say 10 out of 10 will know about jesus they know about church right? they know about it we don't have to tell them you know who jesus is they know right now if you're talking to a hindu they may not know who jesus is they may have heard of church right? but they may not know what jesus did or you know what is who is this man named jesus so find out what knowledge they have uh about jesus or about the church about you know, what's happening in 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 a, in christendom so uh so find out you know you can ask them many questions hey have you been at church any time or have you heard about jesus or have you uh what do you think about this cross that you see outside the church you know i asked a jain uh a person who was a jain i asked him what is the cross and he he gave me a wonderful response uh he said the cross uh means that the christian should be there in that place so I, i realized that hey sometimes we feel that they know but they don't right so it's very important to ask questions find out what what is it that they are, are you know uh, believing in what is their belief system and all of that now there are different levels of questions we can ask right uh, one we can ask okay uh, robert has raised his hand yes go ahead robert pastor can i ask something go ahead pastor whenever i am talking to any of the hindus like what they mean about church they suddenly in their mind a catholic kind of building comes 
like white building with big big cross and with idols and then if i am approaching them to take to a protestant place they might be thinking that it's an another home they are not able to accept it so pastor how we can deal with that yeah that's a good question sir you know so here's the important thing now you don't need to worry about which church you're taking them to first right so you may be in any church that's all right first what's important is you present the gospel to that person right present it you tell him or her what the gospel is right because if you if we try to begin to uh, you know explain to them about the denominations now they're going to get completely confused right uh, because it, there are so many denominations now what's important is you present the gospel you say this is what jesus did this is what you so you just present the gospel and then you invite them to your church whichever church that you're going to right you don't have to go and tell them okay so this is a catholic church this is a protestant church this is right you don't have to do that you present the gospel invite them to your church and remember it is the holy spirit who brings conviction into the person's heart right uh, the most we can do is present the gospel invite them to church and then when the holy spirit convicts them there will come a time eventually they will grow in the lord right they won't be in the same uh, you know uh, level as they grow in the lord they will begin to understand okay this is you know a denomination of christianity and this is another denomination now the wrong thing to do is you know uh, oh, I, i remember this uh, one person uh, asked me this and the wrong thing i did was i said even hindus have so many denominations right immediately i answered that way and i and i just lost that person i mean i i could not evangelize to him because uh, i said the wrong thing right uh, i said you know uh, even hindus have so many denominations so it's okay uh, but i realized that hey i should not have gone that way uh, so my responsibility is to sh- present the gospel the holy spirit will bring conviction and then you just invite them to your church right uh, now there were di- there are different cultures like in north india they have different cultures south india the church have different cultures right uh, a lot of people ask oh, why is it that you're not removing your shoe here and uh, in south but you remove the shoe when you go into church uh, you know in north india women cover their hair and so all these are the you know the the practices now the practices are different but the the gospel is one the same right so uh, what we have to do is uh, so can you, know, you 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 present the gospel right and leave the conviction uh, to the holy spirit and then later on uh, as they grow in the lord uh, i would say give them a year or so right give them time to grow uh, but if they come with questions like okay what is this what is this denomination what is this go ahead and give them simple answers uh, try not to confuse them uh, uh, but don't start off with the denominations if you start that Uh, because sometimes we don't know ourselves you know unless we've done a deep study of how these denominations come into being uh, so just give the gospel make it precise and that should be enough hope that answers your question right thank you pastor yeah sure all right uh, what sir says pastor i have a friend he is a believer but he has a liberal view on some homosexuality so how do i reach out to him more effectively and some practical tips and scriptural references okay that's a good question what sir so yeah now with this what is happening around us uh, it is sad to see that even you know uh, this whole thing of homosexuality uh has gone to an extent where it's come into the church and the church has you know agreed with the, uh, some of its uh teachings and some of the things that are happening and it's a sad thing now here's the thing as a believer uh uh we are not to live a homosexual life now paul writes to the romans right uh the romans were involved in romans chapter 1 he says uh they were having men were having relationships with men they were living in sexual immorality and it was all right uh, during that time uh, but later on in romans chapter 3 he goes on to talk about god's judgment and how through this god brought uh, his son jesus into the world to find forgiveness of sins now the best way 
uh, what's to reach this kind of person is. Now, he is a believer, uh, but he's got this liberal view. So it is the work of the enemy. Right? Uh, that's all. We, it is the work of the enemy, uh, but it does not mean that he has lost his salvation. Right? The enemy brings temptations, brings wrong ideas, wrong thoughts. Right. So uh, he, our background, while you're sharing with this person, is okay. He knows Christ. It's just that he's lost his way uh, along the road, and so we need to help him get back on track. And so one of the things you can tell him is you bring verses where it talks about holiness, right? Uh, Romans chapter 12 says, you know, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, then you can give uh, verses on Rome. Uh, if you read Romans chapter one, there are plenty of verses uh, which talk against homosexuality. Then you can tell, uh, you know, how uh, uh, God has called us our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so when God made us uh, and when we become believers, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We don't need to go to a place, but the Holy Spirit resides in us. Right. So that is a powerful verse that you can share. You can tell them, hey, when you accepted Christ, the Holy Spirit resides in us. Right? He's inside us. He's, uh, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So when we do these things, when we continue on in homosexuality, Corinthians, Paul writes to the Corinthians and he says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit uh, who you have been uh, sealed with. Right. Uh, so these are some of the verses that you can give. Words, sir. Uh, practically, uh, you know, with the things that are happening around, you can go ahead and, you know, just try to find some time to sit and to talk with this person, I tell them that, you know, this is what it is. This, this is how uh, God is. God is able to deliver you from this. Now, there will be times when they feel it's not wrong. Right? It's not wrong to be in a gay relationship or a homosexual relationship. Uh, uh, but you hold on and you, you know, you begin to tell them the effects that happens in the mind, in the body, in the soul, uh, when we continue these relationships. And then you can just bring out uh, scripture saying God has, you know, uh, created us as man and woman, and that's what he wants. That's his design. This is not God's design. And so we are to avoid it. Um, practically, it may take time, uh, uh, but don't, uh, don't, stand back or don't take a step back thinking, okay, uh, since it's going to take time. But remember, the gospel is the power of God. So practically, you can just, you know, go ahead and send some verses. You can send them songs. Maybe you can pray, prayerfully send them verses, um, send them some songs that and pray that God will minister to them uh, uh, through those verses and through the songs. So, yes, I hope uh, that helps what's uh, uh, Yes, Pastor. That was helpful. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Okay. Uh, nice. That's good questions. Right. So, uh, again, while we ask questions, uh, you know, uh, the level of conversation, make sure it's appropriate. You know, getting to know the person is very important now. Uh, for example, you have a friend in, in, in college or in your workplace. And they are an unbeliever. Don't go directly to them and say, you know what? Let me share about Jesus. Don't make that mistake, because I've made that mistake. And I was so filled with zeal, uh, but I did not act in wisdom. Right? Uh, don't make that mistake. Get to know the person. Get to know about their life, about their family, about their background. Right? Uh, where did they study? Where did they live? Where did they, uh, you know, uh, uh, how many people in their family? Just, just get to know them. Develop good friendships, right? Now you and I can, you know, speak into a person's life only if we have developed a good friendship with them, right? So, for example, I don't know a person very well, and he tells me, you know what, Paul, you should not preach this way. You should, uh, you know, uh, you should preach that way or this way. I'm not going to take what he says because I haven't de developed a relationship with that person. But if I've got a friend or a, I've developed a relationship with a person over like four or five years of, uh, and he or she knows me very well. And when they give speak into my life, I'm going to take it. And when I speak into their life, 
most probably they're going to take it because we have built a relationship. So remember uh, to ask questions that build relationships. Right? Remember this. I love this in um, Matthew 4. Just picture this, right? Uh, Jesus has just begin, began his ministry, right? Now, here comes Andrew, right? Andrew is the disciple of John the Baptist. And all of a sudden, John the Baptist says, hey, I'm not the Messiah. He is. Go after him. Now, I love that verse, Matthew 4. Andrew goes up to Jesus. What does he ask Jesus? He doesn't ask Jesus, uh, are you the Messiah? Are you the one who uh, Moses uh, wrote about and David wrote about? Are you uh, the one who's come? Uh, are you the lamb? Uh, are you the king of the Jews? Nothing. He goes up to Jesus and asks Jesus, where do you live? Out of all the questions, where do you live? I love Jesus' response. Jesus says, come, I'll show you where I live. Jesus didn't say, I live down the road, take a right. That's where I live. I'll see you later. No. He said, it's where I live. Come, I'll show you. And the Bible goes on to say that they spent the whole day there. Right? Uh, Jesus began to talk to them and talk to Andrew. And then towards the end of that chapter, Andrew runs searching for Peter, his brother. Hey, Peter, come. We have found the one who the scriptures have been written about. The Messiah. We found him. So in that one day of discussion with Jesus, Andrew was convinced that he is the Messiah. Now, it does not mean that in one day we can share the gospel to somebody and by evening they will uh, you know, accept the gospel. It does not mean that way. But what I'm trying to get at is Jesus took that opportunity of that question, where do you live? But he took that and he said, let me explain. Let me build a relationship with this person. And he did so. And, you know, he was able to speak into that person's life. What about John chapter 4? Samaritan woman, right? Uh, uh, we know that Jesus asked a question. Uh, he says, uh, can you give me a drink? Right? And it all started off from there. And then God, the Lord Jesus was able to uh, minister and speak into that person's life. Right? So asking the right questions is very critical. In ministry right one of the things you can also ask is what do you do in your spare time what do you do in your hobbies what are your interests now don't keep everything god related right and remember this when you're especially when you're ministering to people don't keep everything god related you know keep just be normal right uh, don't act as if we are the ones who have just come down from heaven sometimes we you may make that mistake, but don't do that. Just be normal. Uh, you know, uh, if if your friends are watching Netflix and other programs, don't go and tell them. You know, if you're watching this, you'll go straight to hell. No, that's the wrong thing, right? Uh, you, you you okay? You can always open up a conversation through that Netflix. Okay, I'm not really. I don't know what's net. I don't follow Netflix and all of that, but. Uh, uh, questions you can ask, right? Okay, so your hobby is watching TV. Uh, what are the other hobbies you have, right? And then you're opening up that person to conversation. Um, and then you can tell them, hey, uh, I remember this. Uh, uh, a young man, he was, he's always, you know, on his phone. So I used to ask him, uh, what do you do on your phone? So he said, I play games and I watch Netflix. I said, okay. Uh, uh, and I thought, okay, I, I, I was really upset because every time he's on the phone and he would be, you know, he was lagging behind in his classes. His parents would tell the pastor, please talk to him. He's not, uh, you know, he's so addicted to his phone and all of that. Uh, but I remember uh, praying and I said, God, how do I help this guy? You know, uh, many people have, young people have lost that interest to study and have, you know, spoiled their lives with all these games and all these uh, things that are around in, in you know, uh, in media. And I remember this thing, uh, uh, The Chosen. I happened to watch a couple of uh, episodes of Chosen. I didn't really watch the whole thing, but I really liked it. So I said, hey, you know what, you can, uh, since you're always on Netflix, why don't you download this app called The Chosen? And, it, uh, and so he began to watch that and 
uh, you know, it really touched his life. So he's saying, he says, hey, uh, Pastor, can you meet, can we meet? I want to discuss on this. These are questions that I have. Now, does not mean he's not, not watching Netflix. He may be watching that, but at least we brought the gospel in, into his heart, into his mind, right? And continue to pray that God will minister to him. So again, don't be uh, legalistic while sharing the gospel. Give people time. Give people their space, right? Of course, we looked at urgency, but urgency does not mean like, okay, now you we have to pray. You know, uh, you have to accept now. That, it does not mean that. Right? Give people their time, right? Another thing that we can do is, as we are asking question, get to know about their spiritual uh, desires, right? Uh, whether you would consider them spiritual or not. So, for example, your you got a friend, ask them if they are spiritual, uh, or 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 look at them. You know, uh, I had a friend. He he wore rings in all five fingers on his left hand. So, I obviously we know that he's you know uh, religious. So he used to say, "This is for good luck. This is for warding off demons. This is for uh, you know no uh, death should not come near me." So one ring in each finger, and. Uh, so I just knew, okay, this guy is religious. And so so there will be people who will be religious, spiritual person, and there will be people who will not be spiritual, right? They don't really care about what's happening. So uh, find out what they are, what are their belief systems. Find out, have they been to church? Uh, 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 you know, find out if they have heard of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Or find out what 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 they think about God. Now, different people have different perspectives, right? Even in Christianity, right? We get a lot of questions as pastors. People ask us, you know, um, why is the Old Testament God so angry every time, and then the New Testament God is so good, right? And so, when we look at, I think you may be studying Old Testament survey this semester. When we look at the Old Testament. And when we look at all the wonderful things that God has done, uh, it looks like God is an angry God, but it is not. It is the mercy of God throughout the Old Testament, all through from Moses, from the time of captivity, from the Babylonian captivity, the Assyrian captivity, uh, uh, from the time uh, God brings in these prophets. Uh, it is only God's mercy, right? And And so... When we look at it, it looks like it's, you know, God is an angry God, but it's not. It's the mercies of God that has saved his uh, people. Imagine this, the Old Testament. The, the Israelites have come out of Egypt. What would they, what are you supposed to do? 400 years in bondage. You come out of Egypt. They're rejoicing. They're saying, happy, thank God. God has brought us out just 15 days down the line. Not even 15, I think it was nine or 10 days down the line. They are murmuring. Oh, can we go back to Egypt? There was food there. There was this there. There was good food. And now, what would you and I do? You know, I've brought you out of Egypt and I'm getting you into your own land. And then you're murmuring. You know, God could have just wiped them off. He said, okay, you know, I'm done with you guys. But all through the te Old Testament, it is God's mercy. Remember, Jeremiah writes, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, the Jews are in captivity. They've been there for 45 years. They're, I, they're living in sexual immorality and idolatry. They're living in complete sin. God could have given up on them, but it is God's mercy that he says, okay, listen, Israel, I have a plan for you, a plan to prosper you, plan to give you a good hope, to give you a good future. So let go of all the sin, let go of all the idolatry and all the uh, things of the flesh and just follow me and I will give you a good future. It is all God's mercy and grace. So uh, within Christianity, many people may have different ideas and thoughts of Christianity, right? So ask good questions. Uh, a very important question to ask is, what do they think about afterlife, right? What do you think? Do they believe in heaven or hell? Some of them don't believe in heaven or hell, right? Um, and it's interesting here, you know, 
some people say oh, why why is there so much of preaching of hell in hell uh, yes there are, there is preaching in hell it's interesting because jesus himself, out of all the men all the things that jesus spoke about jesus spoke about hell the most he said we need to avoid it right so so doesn't mean that we all go ahead and only speak about hell what i'm trying to say is there is heaven there is hell right and 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 so we need to ask questions ask them what do they believe some of them believe that you know uh, the spirit will go and join with the uh, you know the uh, souls in the heavenly realms some of them believe we'll just become uh, karma which is whatever good we have done uh, if you've born a, a shudra or if you're born in the caste system if you're born in any of the line kshatriya or any of those uh, when you die and you come back the greatest aim is you should become a, a brahmin right the highest form of hinduism and so if they don't become that then the karma cycle goes on and on until you become that so that's that's their belief system so you ask them why do why do they believe that right and then uh, you can ask them questions like what do you think um, why do you think there's evil in this world simple question why is there evil in this world why is there uh, why is there so much of you know innocent lives going why are people killing each other for no reason right um uh, i'm reminded of this story that i read it's quite a gory scene but uh, uh, it is said that you know some uh, uh, this happened in 2005 2006 i remember reading about this article where uh, during those times uh, uh, in saudi arabia there was a family that was caught uh, uh, you know with with the scriptures and uh, with the bible and uh, they were actually cut into two in front of their children and it was a, it became a became a whole a whole new level of you know uh, uh, persecution started on from their own and uh, why is there such so much evil in this world uh, it's a question that we all think about and these are questions you can ask now after asking these questions you get to you get an answer we need to build on that right now everyone may say okay uh, you you've got your questions say for example somebody doesn't believe in heaven or hell so you, so you may not know what to say then be prepared prepare yourself go back read the word ask god for wisdom right so one of the things you can say is uh you know we are spiritual beings and you can build on that you can say what the scripture says right uh, that to be absent in the body is to be present with the lord and uh, you know one of the things that we may feel is how will this person understand all these verses and all that don't feel that way they may not understand it's all right go ahead and give this gospel give the scriptures because god's word hebrews 4 is sharper than a two edged sword and it penetrates people's heart so we should not worry okay if i say all this will it even make sense to them it may not make sense but god's word is able to it's sharper than a two edged sword it penetrates their hearts every joints every marrow it's able to change their lives it's able to put, you know be a seed um I, you know, we did a series uh, in church a couple of uh, uh, i think it was early january where we did the miracle seed uh, i forget when it was but we did the miracle seed how god's word is a miracle seed when we share the gospel with somebody it's like a miracle seed being put into their heart right and you build on that you water it take care of it you nurture it and one day it will bear fruit right so you can begin to invite them after you've asked all this begin to invite them invite them to special occasions like you know good friday uh, you know invite them you can say you know this is what jesus did i remember uh, about 6 years back uh, 6 7 years back uh, i invited a, a muslim friend of mine i said uh, hey I intentionally wanted to invite him for Good Friday, so so I waited, waited. 
Now, I've been sharing the gospel with him, but nothing was going through. Uh, but I said, why don't you come to church on Good Friday? So I gave him the directions and I, I was waiting at the gate. I said, come, come to church. And then he came, right? Uh, he came to church and it was a powerful sermon. The worship was powerful, uh, powerful sermon on the cross and what uh, Jesus did on the cross. And I began, I went and I sat next to him. I was sitting next to him during the service and I began and sat next to him. And, and I saw that he was tearing up. He was crying. Uh, and I just let him be. Right? I said, this is the work of the Holy Spirit. And I didn't do anything. All I did was six months of sharing the gospel. Didn't do anything. I mean, maybe there were seeds in his heart, but, uh, that, but that day on Good Friday service, he lifted up his hand and he gave his life to Christ in the church next to me. And it was such a powerful time. So uh, inviting them to these special occasions, special services, is very important. Preferably invite them. Right? You can invite them for Easter. Has anyone told you about Easter or, uh, you know, uh, what, what, we, what do we do? Why do we celebrate Easter? You know, there was only one person who died and rose again. And I remember uh, sharing this with a friend of mine. And I said, uh, hey, you know, what's interesting? Uh, you know, Gautama Buddha died. They found his hair. Uh, 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 you know, Muhammad died. They found his teeth. But when Jesus died, they just found an empty tomb. I just told him this. Right. And he went home and he began to think of this a whole week. He was thinking of it. He said, what did you mean that they found an empty tomb? I said, they didn't find anything. They didn't find Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus's hair or his teeth or uh, his, you know, uh, nothing. It was an empty tomb. Jesus rose again and, uh, uh, you know, was able to you know, share the gospel. So there will be these wonderful opportunities that God can give us. Christmas again. Wonderful time to, uh, you know, uh, bring the gospel to people. I think Christmas is the uh, is the best time to share the gospel, right? The best time. Uh, unfortunately, as a church, we have commercialized Christmas. Right? We've commercialized it, uh, where it's only about jingle bells and the Christmas tree, uh, and we've forgotten all about Christ. Remember this one time in Mangalore, uh, we've been doing concerts or well, not concerts, but Christmas carols uh, in maybe about four or five malls here in the city. And so we went and spoke to the manager of the mall and uh, he said, oh, yes, yes, please come. He's not a believer, but uh, he said, yes, yes, please come. Uh, you can sing your jingle bells and all that. I thought to myself, that's not what we're coming for. But anyways, he gave me permission. Then I said, see, I want 10 minutes to share about Christianity, about what Jesus did. He said, no, uh, no, no, you can't share about all that. I said, then we are not coming. Uh, the point is not for all of them to uh, you know, look at us and clap and say good and go. That's not the point. The point is the gospel, the message needs to be shared. Uh, then he said, no, no, you come, you sing the songs, we'll put a Christmas tree, you stand in front of the Christmas tree. and all that. I said, without sharing the Christmas message, we will not be coming to do the, uh, you know, uh, uh, to do the carols. And then he, he was not too keen. He said he needs to ask, but eventually he gave us permission. So uh, in between the carols, 10 minutes presenting the gospel. And uh, it was a good time where, you know, people were listening. There was this one boy who came to church we had book tables where they could take books and uh, our materials reading materials so this one boy came he he came after the concert uh, uh after the whole thing he came to me and he said uh, you know i really enjoyed this i really enjoyed the way and that message that you shared touched me and i was so happy you know even if it was one person it's all right right uh, sometimes you think you're doing all this effort and only one person, that's all right. There's rejoicing in heaven for that one person, right? So take efforts. And uh, now that everything's online, uh, you have, uh, you know, some of some of us may look at it as a disadvantage, but I looked at it as an advantage. Initially, it was like, what's happening? We need to get back to church. But then you look at it as an advantage. I began to send all kinds of links to people, uh, you know, uh, listen to this sermon, listen to this uh, and uh, many of them have responded with a lot of questions. So that's the part where we have to, you know, spend time with them as well. 
So get to know their belief system. Uh, Robert says, many of my friends ask me, do you drink wine? I say no. And they say, what kind of Christian are you? All the Christian drink wine during the supper. Okay. So you say, I don't drink wine. Just tell them I'm a good Christian. Don't worry. Uh, don't have to explain. Uh, remember I said that there are times you'll have to answer people. There are times you don't have to answer them. There are times you just have to let go. You know, uh, if you look at history, Paul says to, uh, he said to, I think it was Timothy, he said, uh, drink, lit drink little wine. Now, history says that wine, little wine and a lot of water was mixed. And uh, uh, he was with Luke and Luke was a physician. So it is said that, you know, the physicians would give them this portion of little wine and extra water. It was not to intoxicate them, but it was only to bring uh, strength to the bones and strength to the organs in the body. Right. So it was as a medicine. Now, it's not like now, right? If you if you got headache, you don't have to drink wine. You have to you just go and get a tablet and pray and drink it and be happy. So, yes. So as I said, Rob, uh, so you know that people will ask questions to trap you. You don't have to answer all questions. Be wise. Right. Be wise. Don't 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 answer all questions. Tell them, hey, this is my belief system. This is what I believe in. If others are drinking, that's up to them. Right? But this is what I believe in. So you hold your stand. Right? You don't have to explain everything to everyone. Right? Okay. Uh, so I think we've passed time. Uh, we will pick up this from next week. I was wanting to complete this chapter, but it's all right. It was good that we could spend some time with questions. Uh, any other question? Any other question? Uh, any other thoughts that we that you want to share and that we can close in prayer? Right. Okay. Uh, can one of us please clo close in prayer? Um, uh, Jafina, if you're there, can you please close in prayer? Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Sitkina. Go ahead. Father God, we come to the throne of grace. Whatever we have learned today, we thank you, Pastor. We thank you, Pastor Paul Emmanuel. Pastor, whatever you, Pastor, we pray that whatever we have learned today, let it be in our heart and we should be put, put it into practice. Lord, we thank you for this session. We thank you for this interesting session, Lord. Whatever we have learned, Lord, whatever we have seen, and we thank you for this session, Lord. We pray that whatever you have put in our heart and whatever the questions answer we got, we thank you for this session. Lord. We thank you for the Bible College, Lord, today. If we have completed our one month, Lord, thank you for everything you have done to us, Lord, and all the people and all the fellow classmates, so Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Sitkeno. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful week ahead. We will catch up next week. Thank you, Pastor. God bless. God bless.